Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me today and clicking on this video. Chances are if you clicked on this video, something resonated with you in the title. And my topic today is discussing guilt and shame in divorce. This is something that is really close to my heart because it's something that I struggled with quite a bit and I'm going to tell a story and tell my story so that hopefully something that I say might resonate with you and help you along your journey. And essentially, I've been married and divorced three times and I've done it all kinds of ways so I completely get it. And my backstory is I grew up in a very religious household and fairly strict. We, it wasn't miserable. It just was very religious. We were in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, you name it. Religion was a very big part of our lives. And so I remember that when I was going through my first divorce, I had a lot of guilt and shame around that. And most of that was my religious upbringing. And even though I wasn't practicing in any specific religion at that time, I was in my late twenties, it's still really hit home for me and made a really big impact and I think most of it was subconscious just the things that I had grown up with and kind of how I viewed divorce and how our church had viewed divorce and so even though I was going through the process and you know that wasn't going to stop the process I still had a lot of emotions to deal with around it and I remember struggling quite a bit and feeling like I wasn't good enough and I had all of this guilt and I wasn't even sure where the guilt was coming from. I had to dig really deep and realize, oh, it's from these childhood experiences and kind of what I was taught growing up and it was coming out in that situation. And so I tried to really work through a lot of that and I kind of live my own life. My family is very scattered throughout the US and while we're in touch and we're all very close now, I didn't really go through stages where I really let my family impact me, but I know that certain things, of course, were felt very deeply by my parents in particular. And so that was a lot for me to kind of juggle and handle given that I was going through my own journey with that, my own thoughts and feelings. And I had to sort out what was really my viewpoint and how I felt about everything versus what everybody else felt about it. And I had to really get to that place where I didn't care what anybody else thought about it, but it did bring up a lot for me in terms of things that I needed to work on and process and the things that I had grown up with that were very different to me in how I view things now and what I believe now. And then when I was going through my second divorce, that was a tough one. Um, a lot of emotions, a lot of issues surrounding that. And again, the feelings of guilt and shame started to creep in. And it was the, the whole thing of, oh, great, here we go again. And, you know, I, I knew my parents had thoughts and feelings about it. And while they were very gracious and for the most part held their tongue, they kind of let me go through my own situation. And they've been very great about letting all of their kids live their own lives. But those feelings popped up again and it was very strange to me and and all of it was just around my upbringing and how people kind of view divorce the landscape of that is changing a lot which i'm super grateful for it seems like there's less stigma attached to divorce now which is great because really the bottom line is it's just a life journey it's something that a lot of people go through and while it's not ideal I don't think anybody goes into it thinking, oh, well, I've always got that as an option. At the same time, there are circumstances where sometimes two people can't stay together for whatever reason that is. And so I th feel like our society is becoming less judgmental. And so a lot of times the guilt and shame that we feel is really self-inflicted. And so by the time I got to my third divorce, I was a pro. <laughs> It's funny, but it's true. I got to that point and I, I, I didn't have any more guilt or shame around that. And part of that was I have lived my life. I have tried very hard in my relationships. They all taught me different things and there were great experiences in them. There were some really hard experiences in them. But the bottom line was I didn't regret any of them. And the older I got and the more I went through, the more I appreciated each of my marriages for different things that they taught me. 
and different ways that they helped me grow as a person and realize, uh, you know, things that I could work on and to really explore things that I grew up with and how I felt in the world while also exploring boundaries because I had no boundaries. And in two of my marriages, not having any boundaries and really sticking up for myself was uh, very challenging. And it taught me a lot though in the end because I did end up turning around and standing up for myself, which I'm super proud of to this day. But at the same time, it's interesting going through those processes and realizing all the feelings that come up for us and really sitting with them and realizing you know where they come from and is it really what we believe is it really what we think is it really how we feel or are we allowing other people and their opinions to kind of steer us in a direction that isn't good for us mentally and so one of the ways that I kind of helped process my divorces and the things that I'd been through was I view people as LPTs LPTs, Life Path Teachers. And this is something that I coined in my coaching that I'll be talking more about in my videos. But essentially, I began to look at these people that I had gotten into relationships with as people who taught me things along my path and my journey. I learned different things from each of the men that I was married to and each of the marriages that I had, and I wouldn't trade those experiences or those lessons for the world. And when you get to that point, it's amazing and it's super, super freeing to just live life the way that you want to and understand that certain relationships bring value to us. They bring lessons to us. They bring experiences to us and they help you grow as a person if you shift your mindset and let them be that for you instead of worrying about what everybody else is thinking, what everybody else is doing. It's your life. It's your life. And so when you can start to view these life path teachers as a valuable part of your experience and your growth, it shifts everything. And no, it doesn't mean that you can't look back and go, well, that shit sucked or that was really hard. Of course, you're, you're divorced for a reason. You know, I had, I was divorced for reasons in all of my marriages and some of them were extremely painful. And those experiences really led me to be the person that I am now and someone who really explores things on a deeper level and what experiences I can take forth and kind of help other people through. And so my main point of this whole video today is I've been through it too many times. <laughs> Hopefully that's the end of, of that. But the amazing thing is I took those experiences I sat down with my feelings, I sorted out what my feelings were, how I felt about things, and I split those between what feelings I was taking on for other people that really had nothing to do with me. And the bottom line is, I'm living my life for myself, and that's exactly how it should be. So my hope is that if you are struggling or going through a divorce or a difficult breakup, especially when you have children involved, I know that can be really, really hard, but if you are carrying any sense of guilt or shame around your divorce, I hope that you will let that go. I hope that you will sit quietly and sit with yourself and think about the things that you've learned from your relationship, why you're experiencing the sense of guilt and shame. Of course, there can be a lot of reasons for that. I know a lot of people feel like that when they have families and they, they don't want their family to be torn apart. But the bottom line is, you know, it's about you, it's about your feelings. And so often we forget that and we take on the weight of the world and our friends and our parents and our teachers and our, you know, our, our siblings, whoever that may be, you're taking on feelings and experiences that aren't yours to take on. So I encourage you to sit quietly with yourself, figure out what you need and how you feel about the situation and let that be the thing that guides you and guides you through the process. And I hope that you can turn off all the other chatter, turn off all the other noise and just make your experience about you because there are a lot of amazing things and experiences waiting for you on the other side of that guilt and shame. And there's no reason to have guilt or shame. This is life. 
These should be experiences that are met with open arms and love for yourself, love for others if you can spare a little, and just thinking about what you want in the future and what things you'll allow and what you won't allow into your life. If you need any help processing any shame or guilt on your journey, I am here for you, so please feel free to reach out. If you got anything from this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'll be sharing more insights and personal stories along the way, and I would love to help you on your journey. So thank you for stopping by, and let's giggle a little.